Hi everyone, Justin Bell here on Life With Legends. So, I doubt there is a corner on the planet Earth where the name Mario Andretti wouldn't be met with recognition. He is, in every way, the definition of a legend. One of only two drivers to win in Formula One, NASCAR and IndyCar, as well as countless victories in midget and sprint car racing. As of today, he is still the last American to win a Formula One race in a career that cemented his legacy as one of the most successful drivers in the history of the sport. Now, of course, he's a brand name involved in current racing as well as a winery and multiple entertainment centers. So it would be easy to forgive Mario for losing connection to his humble origins. But that simply isn't the case. When I went to his house, he was welcoming, kind and generous with his time. And I felt truly privileged to spend the afternoon with him. I love taking his portrait and I think you'll see it. There's a twinkle in his eye that reflects his love of life and his deep and never ending passion for racing cars. This is a special one. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. All right. Whew. You know, it was funny on the way here. I was, I was thinking I've done a million interviews with a million different people. And there's some people that you're more, it's not nervous about doing it in front of, but you're, you're like, I, I, I really want to, you know, be myself and get here and, you know, I am who I am and the way I do it. But I, I actually, do you remember John Morton? Yes, indeed. So last week I, I went and did John oh. and he said, cause you know, he, He's, he's a guy that was faster than his name would suggest, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was one of those guys that drove really well. But I was... Una can am, yeah. Can am. I, I was unashamedly... Uh, I said, just so you know, you're my crash test du dummy for Mario with my <laughs> new equipment. And he was like, that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. So, <laughs> geez. Uh, no, as I said, thanks for having me here. Um, it was one of those things that when I, when I said I was to my dad I was coming here, who says hello, as I said. Um, he was like, uh, he's like, I've never been, I mean, wh where are you going again? I, Nazareth, Pennsylvania? Yeah, and I said, yeah. Good. My kids are like, where are you going again? Yeah. yeah. Well, at least he said Pennsylvania, he didn't say Israel. I know, no. that's true. That would have been even worse. There's a Bethlehem. Just, uh, I, I little, saw that on the sign as well. From here. I mean, it, you, so you're in a holy land. But anyway, what uh, does that make you? The the yeah. it's the holy land. What does that make you? <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back. You you as you said, you were how many years in the? But well, we came to camp? America in 1955. Yeah, and um, I was 15 years old. Twin brother Aldo, 15 yeah. as well, obviously. Yeah, and um, it was actually my sister's birthday when we were just uh, sailing by the Statue of Liberty five in the morning. Yeah. On a beautiful June day, yeah, uh, June 16, 1955. It was actually quite the moment. But uh, anyway, and you remember that? Oh, vividly. Really? Absolutely. We were on the bow of the ship, and uh, my sister had learned the uh, American national anthem, so she was blurting away. No. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that it—that's the kind of thing that will stick with you forever. Forever, right? Yes, indeed. Do you think those moments are more deeply rooted because of the trauma beforehand? Indeed, of yeah. course. I mean, uh, this was uh, uh, the unknown. You know, yeah. we were venturing into the unknown. Yes, well, we had some relatives here, but uh, uh, going to America, even when the visas were finally approved three years yeah. after my dad applied, yeah. uh, my dad said, well, yeah, he said, I guess we're going to America and uh, maybe for five years and then come back just so to soften, you know, the, the blow, if you will, because it was the unknown. Yeah. You know, it was the promised land, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Which it became exactly that and more, you know, but uh, the unknown. And, uh, you know, we were a product of the war. You know, yeah. unfortunately, you know, that we uh, lost everything during the war, uh, because our region was ceded to Yugoslavia, yeah. hardline communism, and the choice was to succumb to that or leave. Jeez. And me, we were refugees in our own country yeah. for seven years, seven and a half years. As you get older, do you, when, when, probably when you came of age and you had your own kids, you probably realized 
and only appreciate what it was like for your parents because you were kids with that Indeed. well it's an adventure but they must have been through <laughs> hell but that's you know the responsibility like my dad kept saying your future your future your future i'm only d doing this because of you kids you know yeah. you have a whole life ahead of you and you know in those days you know he was only in his 40s and he you know, he felt, uh, well, it's, you know, I'm at the end of my life. You know, yeah. he lived to be 90. <laughs> yeah, know, but uh, nevertheless, you know, it's that. But back then, yeah, back no one then, lived to 90. I yeah, mean, it was exactly. a rarity. It's yeah, he was yeah. right, right? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. But uh, anyway, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was a blessing, obviously, yeah. what happened. And um, I always look back, uh, Justin, uh, so many of the so-called negatives becoming yeah. positives. Yeah. Yeah. This is certainly one of them. And, um, you know, even, uh, you know, years after being here and so forth, things going well, um, my dad was still recall. And um, I said, well, you know, uh, back when I and my friends, this and that, I said, Dad, I said, you know, Marshal Tito, you know, Yugoslavia, we should put him on our Christmas card list. I said, yeah. because, because of him, we're here. Yeah. And um, look what's uh, what's happening to us, you know, the kids, uh, the opportunities. Uh, because I fell in love with the motor racing when I was there, you know, that the yeah. early 50s, you know, a prominent, uh, the sport, the Formula One was in, totally. in Italy. Totally. Emilia, Emilia. Ferrari, Emilia, Maserati, yeah. Alfa Romeo, and, and yeah. world champions at the time. And, uh, you know, uh, Scari, Tarufi, Castellotti, I mean, you know, you go on and they on and there. on. And uh, so I... I fell in, I don't know why, but just just was attracted to the sport, when, along yeah. with my brother. Just right and from the, the minute you saw a car, because where, where was the first ever racing car that you saw? Uh, on, uh, on the video, you know, like actually we would go to the movies, okay. and then they would have newsreels, and of course prominent, you know, the, the sport, you know, the calcio, you know, soccer yeah. and so forth. But the automobile racing was the first one. And of course, they, they would show races in Argentina, wherever, yeah. you know, the Grand Prix would go. And then uh, my high, absolute idol became my Berta Scotti. Yeah. You know, and that time world champion, you know, he was killed like a month, yeah. two months before we arrived here. But anyway, uh, and, uh, but uh, we saw, we were hanging out uh, in a garage next to where the camp was, if you will, yeah. which was inside the city of Luca. And, um, and, and we befriended the owners, you know, and they used to let us uh, uh, park cars. Yeah. You know, the yeah. rest of the were parking garage as well and doing burnouts. And, and how that. old were you now? I was then like 12 then, to 14. Wow. 12, okay. But at 14 years of age, he took us to Monza to see the Italian Grand Prix and the mold was cast. I mean, that was it. The dream, I said, from here on in my own mind, there was no plan B, you know. And, um, you know, when we arrived here in June, full, you know, full season on, yeah. then, and the local racetrack here, uh, we were, we arrived on a Thursday, on a Sunday night, we were hanging about um, my uncle's house yeah. there, and, and we see bright lights in the background. Aldo and I looked yeah. at each other, and it was an explosion of vengeance. Yeah. All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. And I said, uh, I said, I said to Uncle, I said, uh, "What's going on?" She said, oh, they have this noise in race car. Wow. We, yeah. we just booked, followed the noise, and and saw the uh, uh, the modified stock cars yeah. there on a half mile dirt track. And I mean, as different <laughs> as different from being at Monza. Know, than you could but, ever be, but the same spirit, right? The same. Yes, but yeah. you know what? You know what was the bright side? It looked very doable to us. Yeah. And Monza looked like million years away yeah. and, and all that. Good but point. here it says, two years after, we start, at age 17, we assembled four other buddies, yeah. and we started building a car to race here. Jeez. That's how it all started. I mean, it's it's <laughs> funny, you know, when when I went to Monza uh, to what? Why did Dad and I go there? Maybe, well, the Monza thousand kilometers. Thousand so, k's, yeah. So I was there, and I'm twelve. I'm probably the same age, fourteen years old, and he wanted to make sure that I walked down that middle part where all the trees are in, like the park and the. the park, yes, he yeah. said. You've got to, f he said, you can feel it, that yeah. JB. You can hear the, hear the noise. noise of the heroes Which of the past. And the, even though there were no 
car's moving at that yeah. point. He said, just listen. And, and yeah, so for you, it must have been no, extraordinary. It's poetic. What do you remember about seeing, because you did see Ascari drive, didn't you? In, yes, yes, yeah. he was there. He finished third. Yeah. But of course, you know, there was uh, Mercedes was dominating in those days. Yeah. It was fun, Joe Kling. And, um, <clears throat> but uh, he fought so hard, you know, with yeah. the, uh, we were just, um, uh, well, on the berm, you know, now yeah. there's some uh, bleachers, you could be right there. bleachers uh, before yeah. the Parabolica. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, anyway, so he just had that car sideways and everything, yeah. Yeah. raising dust and, I mean, really driving He was hard. a strong, a strong yeah, guy, was, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but very calm, you know, yeah. they used to uh, portray him as uh, he had ice in his veins and really? all of that, you know, yeah. as a kid, he said, oh. You know, yeah. because because you're so excited and you see them. Oh, he's so calm, so yeah. cool and yeah. collected. Yeah. It's like, oh man, that's my man. That's <laughs> you know that uh, I was in uh, inducted in the International Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Two years later, posthumously, I was asked to induct him. Oh, Can you imagine wow. talking no. about coming full circle? Full circle. And uh, and and I presented his son Antonio. That's crazy. With the, with the, you know, with yeah. the induction plaque. <laughs> I love those moments. It's like he would never have known the impact. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you... Did you ever get the chance to talk to him about your career and... No, no, no never. But, no, but the, it's been talked about, it's been written about, that the, mm. the family, uh, his wife, Marietta, she, she knew all about, you know, uh, us, myself, you know, being so... Uh, you know so much as you know having um, having had uh, him as my hero yeah. and he, uh, so obviously being so inspired inspired yes. you know every generation I, I remember talking to Sterling about it and he said you know every generation but he was another one he's Talk another one right Sterling. the guy I mean he was a, uh, here again yeah. you know a year after I watched him uh, at the Mille Miglia you know, we were at the uh, Futa Pass yeah. and the Abetona and watched him with the Dennis Jen yeah, Jenks, Jenkins you know, yeah. there. With the, his yeah. head was bobbling away. <laughs> going, Whoa, and yeah. With his Mercedes, you know, going by. So, yeah, he was another one, you know, my hero again. And, and when I finally got to meet him and Fonjo, you know, what uh, I mean. And I think they were taken back as to how much I knew about their career. Because, um, and I remember we were in Argentina, and Fonjo was really interested uh, in me talking to him because, you know, he says, oh, he says, this young man don't even know about us, you know. Yeah. I said, well, I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's probably the same for you. Now, as you've taken on that mantle, you're the, you know, you're them now yeah. and the younger guys you're probably like why does jimmy johnson know about i mean he knows about you but you know you obviously yeah. but all these guys yeah. uh b being a role model probably was the last thing on your mind when you were <laughs> when you, you were a kid right i mean who would have ever thought that no but did, did you ever i mean this is kind of weird a question but when did you kind of go oh my god i've become become Mario Andretti I mean you know what I mean there's, there's a moment when you're like you became your own version of folklore at some point when did you well there was not a moment really quite honestly because um, I've been so blessed and fortunate to have a long career so it took a long time you know for and things were progressing so well there were moments where I felt uh, oh my god what if this didn't happen I yeah. mean you, you, know, you know what I mean as yeah, far yeah, as yeah. opportunity and so forth like oh what what was this one of those? Launch. What was the was well, it Colin like, Chapman when he well, you offered know, you a drive well, or what? yeah? There are moments. Well, listen to this, uh, for instance. Uh, you know, I fought when when we uh, built the car to race here. Uh, you had to be twenty one, but we the car was ready in nineteen. So we fudged. Uh, we had a local um, uh, editor of the local paper, uh, Les Young, who befriended. We befriended, and he. He, he changed our birth date on our license <laughs> and so forth. So Aldo and I, we started in 19. But we were we were winning. Yeah. We started, you know, and I'm telling you, it's a matter of record. Aldo won the very first race, and I won the second race. We crashed. We did all the thing later. But, you know, we really had a wonderful first season. Yeah. And uh, Aldo got hurt badly on the second season, which basically determined his career. But uh, I went on another year in... Uh, 
the, with our stock cars or won another 24 races. And then, then, uh, but you know, this, I don't have that in my record because those were unsanctioned events. It were local. I mean, local, we, we, we ran three tracks within 150 miles, you know, but they were not sanctioned by any yeah. uh, entity. And uh, But anyway, uh, at age 21, I started driving. We bought, I had uh, my future father-in-law. I talked him into buying a three-quarter midget who was uh, driven by none other than, uh, than uh, Bobby Marshman at the time, who was uh, already a uh, very consummate, you know, IndyCar driver, but he yeah. was driving this quarter midget. And um, and with that midget, I I won the, the the actually the 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 best the biggest race of the season, the hundred lapper in Teaneck, New Jersey, who finished second to me was Len Duncan, who was at the time, you know, one of the uh, icons of midget racing and yeah. and that gave me a ride in a full size midget. And a full size midget, a couple of years later, I won three races in one day, three features. And uh, and then on Labor Day, 1963, and uh, I'm talking about the moments that yeah, really, yeah, really made changed. a difference. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, at the end of my third feature, Chris Economaki was the uh, he was the announcer. Yeah. And I saw I told this a million times, but I got to tell yeah, you yeah. again, uh, is on a cool down on the, after the third feature, which was about 12:30 yeah. uh, at night. Yeah. Within a 24-hour day, in yeah. other words. Uh, he says, Mario, with a shrilling voice. Yeah. Hey, Mario. Mario. <laughs> yeah, Mario, you just bought your ticket to the big time. Is that what he said? That's what he said. I'll never forget that. And and that that propelled me to a sprint car ride in USAC, which mm. was where all the champ driver, you know, yeah. Foyts, Branson, McCluskey's, uh, and so that's where they were all, you know, part of it. And, uh, and then I win the hunter lapper in salem indiana high banks paved track and and uh here was the point was there and ever so that all of a sudden a ride becomes available because of injury yeah. with the dean band lines and i'm one of the candidates and you know it was between roger pensky and myself to get the test no can you imagine and the test was going to happen in 1964, uh, it was going to happen in Trenton, New Jersey, uh, at a Firestone tire test. And it was between, like I said, Roger and myself, and he talks about it all the yeah, time. Yeah. But, you know, Roger, he had so many things going. He even had, then, right? Even me, then, he, even then. Even he, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was active driver, an active driver, and uh, he had a business meeting, he couldn't make it. So all of a sudden, here, I'm the backup. And I'm in there, and I got the job. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I go back. You know, we're talking yeah. about the moments yeah. in your life and your career that make all the difference. What? What if this and that wouldn't have happened? What if Chuck Coss wouldn't have got hurt? Yeah, you know, where would I've gotten a ride? And you know, in fact, uh, I tell you that this was before Indianapolis. So at Indianapolis, and um, the. Um, uh, Clint Bronner was a chief mechanic, so you're not ready for Indy this year. He said, I'll, I'll let you, you know, you'll be driving some races, you know, but I want you to keep the uh, uh, rookie of the year status for the following year to do full season. Okay. And here I am in Indianapolis, and uh, Bobby, I knew Bobby, I got to know Bobby answer. So he was, um, he, you know, he was driving for Andy Granatelli, and uh, Andy Granatelli was uh, uh, had the garage next to Mickey Thompson, so I was there, you know, hanging out with Bobby and so forth. And and Bobby goes to Mickey Thompson says, says, Hey Mickey, why don't you give a WAP a, a, an opportunity? Why don't you give me? <laughs> he used to call me WAP. Why don't you give a WAP a test? <laughs> He's really good, you know, stuff like that. And so uh, and Mickey told me, Okay, so tomorrow morning, nine o'clock be here and I'll fit you in a car. Justin, I slept purposely. I slept until 12 o'clock. And I says, you know, Clint Bronner said I'm not ready. And I think he's right. And uh, and you know something? Uh, I never showed up. Ooh. I never showed up. 
And here's another moment that's the best decision I could have made in my career. I mean, the cars that uh, Mickey Thompson had at the time had um, uh, uh, very special, you know, with the 12-inch wheels and so on and mm. so forth. It was kind of weird uh, outside the box. And actually, um, uh, they didn't do very well in the race. In fact, uh, you know, it was, it was a fatality of one of the cars. But, um, um, and, and that would have been the worst thing I could have done. Yeah. The following year, However, here I finished third at Indianapolis to Jimmy Clark. Yeah. You know, and, and I get Rookie of the Year. And at the end of, uh, you know, when there's a banquet, you know, the next yeah. day, uh, I befriended uh, uh, Colin during the month and, 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 uh, and Jimmy, as you yeah, see yeah, some yeah, pictures yeah. on the wall yeah, here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and I said to Colin, I said, Colin, I said, uh, someday I'd like to do F1. He said, Mario, he said, when you think you're ready, you give me a call, and I will have a car for you. Justin, can you imagine what yeah. that did for me? And you, you must imagine? have, I, I think about this, exactly the way you're saying it is the way I hoped those moments happen, right? We all yeah. have them in our yeah. own way, even in my career. But when you say that, I was thinking about the Colin Chapman. I was just thinking about it on the last night. What, what was it like when he said, and you just, you know, when he offered you that drive? I just, I think I flew to cloud nine. Yeah, you must have done. <laughs> and as part of it, do you think, because in your, yes, you were American, but in your heart, you were European, especially when you yeah. were younger. Yeah, the course. thought of going back to race against the Europeans, that must have been very compelling, wasn't it? Oh, you're not kidding. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, the opportunity to do that with a top team and oh, so yeah, forth. Crazy. I mean, uh, uh, and that's when I decided to, uh, you know, I needed to enroll and, and, uh, and you know, try to just uh, hone my skills, you know, in road yeah. racing. I lobby like crazy to USAC just to, you know, to have part of the series, some road races. Yeah. In 65, there was the only one road race in Indianapolis Raceway Park, and I won it. And, and you know that uh, in, in 63, also there was one road race in Lime Rock, Connecticut with yeah. midgets. Yeah. Because you know that a uh, long time, that? way back, oh, wow. way back in, uh, I think in 58, Roger Ward entered a midget at the Formula One race that was held in Seabury. Look at, Good look Lord. at the stats. Yeah, I will. Wow. You know, so we had a we had a midget. There was a midget. I got to tell you this. Yeah. There was a midget race in Lime Rock, Connecticut, and um, and actually, um, uh, the owner, one of the top owners in the, in, in the series, he had a car, a rear engine car, built by John Cooper, with an offy engine, just to race that race with a two speed gearbox. And, um, and and Mark Donahue drove it. And he's the only race that he drove because he was a road racer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I hounded him the whole race in the last lap. Last lap, I passed him going in a straightaway. And it, because he had a two-speed gearbox, only had in and out, one speed. Yeah. And my, um, my, the valve, I had to back off just before the start finish line because the engine would have yeah, exploded. Yeah. And there was no rev limiter. And uh, so the last last lap, I just held it in there, scattered the and the valves all over the place. But won the race. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, you know, my road racing that was a dream, you know, to uh, to be able to. And uh, Eric Brawley gave me my first opportunity uh, in a Can Am at Riverside, and then Luigi Kinetti gave me also an opportunity at 24 yeah. Hours of Daytona. And I drove with uh, uh, with uh, Pedro Rodriguez yeah. for his fourth. Um, but I, uh, what I did, I had a great relationship with Ford because uh, you know we were fielding the new Ford engine in Indy cars. And, yeah. and the first year, my rookie year in '65, I won my championship. You know, a national championship. Yeah. So it was it was good. And and uh, with the Le Mans program coming on. They needed drivers to do yeah. the testing and everything. And I said, I'll do every test, wherever you want me. And uh, and that's when I befriended Bruce. You know, okay. Bruce was coming in yeah. whenever he could, but 
uh, whenever he was there, man, he and I were like that, and I was yeah. hanging on to him. Oh, I bet. I was like a puppy dog following him everywhere because uh, then we go to dinner at night and discuss things, you know, because he was such a technical driver that uh, I learned so much from him about, yeah. you know, obviously rotating the car and then blah, 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 all those things. And uh, and so that, that's how everything was just happening. Is that, I mean, and that led, obviously then, because you had that really famous driver, Sebring, right? Yeah. You know, when... when 67. 67. Yeah. I mean, that's... The, to me, that, you know, you just look at the pictures that you talked about, Kennedy giving you that drive in that in that Ferrari. You look at the the Ferraris and the Fords and, the, you know, yeah. at the end of that era into the early 70s, they were monstrous cars. I mean, the yeah. tires and the... Yeah. I mean, and everybody was jumping in the big sports cars, power, yeah. weren't they? A lot of the Formula yeah. One guys, yeah. a lot of... They, oh, yes. No one... There was no segregation, well, really. Yeah, it was. Yeah, there was uh, exactly. I mean, yeah. you had the best of the best. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Driving those uh, long distance races, you know, that that was the beauty of it. Uh, well, what What do you remember about that '67 race? Because uh, it's kind of a bit of folklore, right? Well, what it is, because uh, first of all, uh, again, being part of the, the the development of those cars, this was the the first competitive race of, for the Mark IV. Yeah. And the, which is right behind me on oh, my yeah. desk, you know, yeah. actually, and um, and and again, you know, being with Bruce and so forth, I, I know I felt very confident. I figured, well, I got to do my job, but uh, I knew the car quite well, you know, which doesn't hurt, obviously. No. And uh, we pretty much dominated that race. Uh, the competition was the chaparral for yes. us, and I remember that uh, at least I had uh, the opportunity to race against Phil Hill. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, my stint was with Phil Hill. It was. Yeah. It just the timing worked yeah, out. We were, and we were fighting out. And, <sighs> and uh, yeah. And I was in front of him when they, when they blew up. I see a plume of smoke. I said, oh, what a beautiful smoke. It's you know? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have him to a nicer guy. <laughs> nicer guy. Jeez. He was something else, too, yeah, though, wasn't he? Was he? Yeah, great he was, guy. I, you know, that's the special thing about the memories that you have, whether it's my dad's memories, your memories, Sterling's memories back then, is we all, the fans, know the mo the big moments. Yeah. But it's all the moments in between. It was dinner with Bruce McLaren. Bruce it's, McLaren. It's, yeah. it's seeing everybody in the driver's meeting, you know, having a chat at the coffee. Sh I mean, it, it was... It must have been special by the fact that you respected and admired these drivers. But you don't think of it as part of history. It was just no, your life. No, it was my life. I mean, yeah. I was just uh, trying to just learn as much as I could from uh, individuals that obviously uh, were basically my, could have been my teachers. You know, yeah. they, were my, they were my superiors, yeah. you know. Uh, just like when I broke into the IndyCar ranks uh, in, you know, in 65. Yeah. Uh, who was the, the measure to go up against was A.J. Foyt. Yeah. Five years my senior, uh, already a proven champion, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and those are the ones that make you a better driver. Why? Because you look up the oh, man, <laughs> if I'm going to go anywhere, i got to be able to compete against this yeah. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it makes you work harder and think and do all the things that you need to do. So... Uh, that's why uh, you have tre tremendous respect and admiration for the likes of these individuals. Yeah. Going to Formula One, who was the yard ticket there? It was Jackie Stewart? Yeah. You know. What was your first race against him? Well, it was uh, my first Formula One race was at Watkins Glen, and I was on pole. And who was second? It was Jackie Stewart? My Did you? Was there a moment? There, when you got Paul, did he say anything? Because he, he, he must have been, he would have heard about you. He would have known you were a threat coming up. But he was Jackie Stewart. Yeah, I know. He Jeez. And he didn't say anything. He didn't? Not to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um, and the first race that I won for Ferrari at, uh, a couple of years later in South Africa, who was second? Jackie was Stewart. He really? And the third race that I won, which was... Uh, a twin non-championship race at uh, in Ontario. Yeah, um, it was twin 100s because they had the Formula 5000 as well competing against the uh, Formula Ones. Yeah, and I won both heats, 
in both heats he finished second to me. And that's when Mr. Ferrari offered me a drive, a full-time drive in 71, which um, I couldn't take because of my uh, contracts. And quite honestly, um, I had to look at, uh, at the commercial side of it too, you know, like... Uh, you were doing, you were making a lot of money here. A lot of money, yeah, I was doing. And I was, you know, Justin, you don't dwell on this, but it, how many friends was I losing along the way in those years? And you think I have a young family. Uh, you got to be thinking of, you know. <laughs> providing. <laughs> providing. Yeah. Providing, mm-hmm. you know, in case something happens. And like I said, I never dwell on that, but you have to be realistic. And I use that as an excuse, you know, for, for you know, for. Uh, refuting, you know, re, you know, refusing, yeah. uh, you know, a, a very, a, you know, tempting uh, opportunity. What uh, I mean, it's it goes all the way back to when you missed the Granatelli test, really, right? You you just in the same way you made decisions not to get in cars. Yeah, that's yeah. That was also a trademark of Jackie Stewart, you know, not yeah. to get in cars. Jackie X too didn't get in bad cars. You just, uh, but the. You can't, you didn't dwell on it, but you can't not reflect on it. And for me, it's probably the same as like with Michael, knowing your, you know, being your son at the time. We knew the dangers that you guys, the number of times I'd go into my mum and dad's bedroom, you know, and, and or mum would be crying on a Sunday night or Monday morning. And, you know, we're kids, we're just like, oh, okay, I, I'm not sure why that is. So when people said to me, oh, you just got into racing because, of the girls and the money and the cars. I went, maybe yeah. if you just read Autosport and that was your only thing. Yeah, yeah, but if you're in the family, you know that it's a lot tougher than that. Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> like you said, uh, the other side, the girls, all that thing, that's a caveat. But yeah. <laughs> it's not a motivating factor by any means. Doesn't, you know? doesn't mean. No, no. Do, do you... Uh, Back then, who who particularly affected you when they part, when they got killed? Who oh, who was, stopped uh, you in your tracks and went? Oh, I mean, uh, uh, some of my best friends, like uh, uh, Billy Foster, we were like brothers. Were you? You know, uh, Canadian driver. We came in, we were rookies together, and he's the one that used to get on me. He said, Mario, he had a beautiful family. Uh, he says you're crazy to do in sprint cars. You know, back in the mid '60s yeah. or so. And and then he he outside of IndyCar he was doing stock cars. Guess what? He was killed in a stock car at Riverside. And it was he and I were rooming together. And uh, and he 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 went out. He qual- we were qualifying single car qualifying. I was the next one to go out. And knowing that and and your buddy. Oh just- my God! You know, just I went through this, so many moments like that. Um, um, one of my Good buddies, you know, Judd Larson was killed here in Reading. Uh, at the same time, uh, there were two drivers killed. Red Regal was killed the same accident. We lost two drivers. Three races later, in California, I was, you know, I was in that race as well. My teammate Dick Atkins was killed. You know him and Don Branson. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, as you said, uh, you know, at the drivers' meetings. At the beginning of those seasons, you know, you couldn't help it but look around and say, I wonder who's not going to be here at the end. It was almost like going to war. Mm. And uh, we used to, you know, in the sprint cars, midgets, and, you know, in Indica, we used to, in the 60s, 70s, even some of the 80s, you know, we'd lose two, three, four, six. And when I think it was in 64, we lost six guys that season. And uh, it was... Uh, yeah, and and you know ourselves, you know, like I say, you never dwell. You couldn't dwell on that. You know, you mm-hmm. just you, you feel, you know, I'm invincible. It's not going to happen to me, and all that. You have to have that attitude. Uh, but your wife, you know, you have a young family, and and when I came out of the cockpit, it's the only time that I realize the anguish that my wife was experiencing. All these yeah. years, because here I'm on the sidelines 
watching my kids, you know, Jeff, Michael. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, when I was on the track, the same, you know, with both of them, yeah. uh, I felt like, you know, you have some control, you're doing the same, you know, which is uh, obviously not <laughs> a reality, no. but, but being on the sideline, even though, you know, it's much safer, but you always feel like helpless. And I felt, you know, I, I'm the proverbial nervous Nelly on the sideline yeah. today, you know. And uh, so again, you know, when you start thinking uh, of your family, um, uh, you know, uh, your your wife, your best friend, and so forth, uh, what they went through while I was enjoying myself, yeah. you know, how selfish, you know, that that was, and and realizing how good she was for me by not showing that anguish yeah. by for you know making me uh, guilty you know if you will she was supportive she knew how much i loved it how much i wanted it she never said why do you have to do so much of it can we have a weekend off yeah. and you know i never said that and and i i realized you know what uh, what a what a saint she was yeah. for me you know and especially in that era it was a I mean, I th it was a very tight com co knit community, yes, yes. united in the the, the yeah. sense of adventure. Traveling I think the together, traveling, the traveling you'd sleep, the dri like you said, you'd room with them, you'd dinner together. You'd dinner. I mean, now I know the drivers around, still do it. Throwing salads to one another, yeah, you know, right? And having food fights, you know, in restaurants, you know, having being, yeah, just having the stupid, young having people fun, having you know? a great time. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's uh, one of us is missing, you know, yeah. and. Uh, it was all of that, you know, and that was the reality. That was yeah. the reality of the sport at the time. And, uh, and you know, uh, luckily we all got smarter and mm. started looking at safety. Same. And I look back at uh, uh, how the GPDA started for yeah. no other reason than safety. And, yeah. and it was, uh, at, you know, at the avant-garde of that was a Jackie Stewart and people he did and do myself. A lot, didn't he? I yeah. think I well, take some credit yeah. for that because from a safety standpoint, I was always in for, in fact, I was even accused to be such a, you know, uh, <clears throat> they call it a pussy. Yeah, yeah, know, right. To, no, I know. You know, for uh, having extra, you know, uh, protection around the cockpit yeah. and so forth around my head. You know, I, I keep saying, man, I want to live to be another, to drive another day, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, so even, you know, with the... Uh, Morris Philippe, you know, when he yeah. built the car in, in uh, 74, the first one that had a full protection around my head and so forth, you know. And uh, because I was always, my biggest thing was uh, probably not even, you know, part of potentially being killed, but to, to being paralyzed. And there were so many that uh, had accidents where they were paralyzed. I said, oh my God, I mean, that was my biggest biggest fear was it biggest mm. fear did you and your contemporaries think formula one was more dangerous or indycar at that point i think indycar was it was right? for sure because yeah. of uh, the speed of the ovals yeah, yeah. and the technology and of the cars the, was and again you know in, in indycar even the championship when we had was we had the dirt track races you know we had out of the champion it was six dirt track mm. races and those were lethal. Were they? Yeah. Those were lethal. That's where you... That's before the cages, you know. Was it really? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean... And... But... The way you have to look at it, it's like... I know you had your own viewpoint on Chapman's cars and... But if they could win races and they were fast and they were pushing... I mean, technology always tries to find a way around the regulations. Everyone's pushing as hard as... You all wanted to win... If you win, you could be a bigger driver. You make more money and, and everything. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a tempting thing to, to get in cars. But, I mean, we look at... McLaren had one way of evolving his cars and Chapman had another. What what was it like when you actually got in his cars? Well, you know, I, I knew uh, of uh, some of the drawbacks of Chapman car because uh, even at Indianapolis there, when, they, when I won the race, uh, I started this... The, um, the practice and everything. I was in a four-wheel drive, Chapman, yeah. you know, the Lotus City 3. Um, and uh, and the car was fast and everything, but I started coming out, I almost killed myself. Uh, you know, it was uh, just before qualifying on a Thursday, 
right rear wheel just sheared, uh, crashed, fire, you know, that's when I had my face burned. Yeah. But Graham Hill and Mike Spence also had accidents with the suspension failures yeah. before that, not as serious, and then they had to withdraw the car because of that. And then we saw, you know, Jim Clark and so forth, you know, that uh, there were fatalities, Yuck and Rint, yeah. you know, there was a mechanical fatality that killed both of them. Yeah. And uh, when I, quite honestly, you know, when I joined there, I did. that's not what I thought about, but uh, uh, later on when I got to know uh, the mechanics, you know, like Bob Dance and so forth, and I used to just say, um, let me know if there's some areas where, you know, you just need to do something, you know, make it a little safer. Mm. Like uh, I refuse to have, um, uh, you know, this um, uh, brake pedal, you know, but uh, I can't, can't be thinking that, can't think of the metal. <laughs> uh, what would it mean? Very, Aluminum. Very brittle. Oh, very brittle. Uh, yeah. I'm not thinking about it anyway. Right. Um, and uh, I said, just let me know about certain things if you think like suspension. And, and they, they were looking after yeah. me. Because yeah. that's a relationship, isn't it, that doesn't get enough attention. Attention. I was looking yeah. at it when Lewis pulled out of the garage and the last race, I don't know what made me just think about it. I was watching them in qualifying and they go out and I was watching everybody doing their dance around the car, doing what they do. And I was, yeah. you know, someone is the last person to do you up. Someone yeah. is the last person to, to tie the tie clip, you know, the tie wrap, whatever, you know, yeah. the little bracket. The, I mean, there's amazing trust that you have to have yeah. in, and especially in those days when there were less mechanics, it was pioneering, maybe. Yeah. Justin and I, I have friends from the beginning, you know, that really? uh, you you develop that relationship. Yeah. I, you have, to me, uh, so much appreciation, you know, for what they were doing. And, uh, and they know when you're out there driving your butt off, you know, and if you bring results, you know, they're gonna t take care yeah. of you because yeah. it goes hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it became, uh, uh, wonderful family throughout. I mean, I have, you know, like Bob Dancers of this world, some of the, they visit me here. Yeah. You know, from those days, from That's the great. 70s. That's great, yeah. You know, you develop that in, in IndyCar as well. I mean, the, these are guys that, you know, they're my age and, and so forth, and they're still around, still fiddling with cars, and yeah. we still communicate, you know, and it's, um, it, you develop this lifelong friendship, the bond, yeah. because of that. Because uh, you drove for them, and uh, you brought some results, and they took care of you. Mm. And they and no out. one's ever really talked about that side in the, you know, Beaky Sims strapped Jim Clark in, the, ca in the car that day. He strapped him in, yeah. probably shook his hand, and then Jim dies. Yeah. I mean, I that's know. a leg, That's a weight to live yeah. with, isn't it? Yeah, Beak is another one. He's we an just, amazing guy. Yeah, we yeah. talk. I mean, yeah. he, we, you know, we work like, together. Yeah, you know? and uh, those are the types, you know, that uh, we develop that relationship yeah. that uh, it's lasting a lifetime. Yeah. So when you did answer Ferrari's call, and you go and drive his cars. I was just thinking about, I was looking at a picture yesterday, was it the 1979 Ferrari? I think it was the Formula One car. That was the last Formula One. 82. 82, sorry, 82. That car is maybe the most, one of the most beautiful cars mm -hmm. ever, right? Just the simplicity yeah. of it, it was. But, but did the power with that new turbo. Really? Charge engine. Was it Are amazing? Are kidding? Um, I mean, the qualifying, you know, I, uh, uh, the qualifying mode on that engine, 1,100 horsepower. Jesus. You had about five laps in the engine or something. You really? had to get it done. But because uh, uh, when I was called, obviously it was uh, dire moments, you know, when uh, I was there to substitute Didier Pironi, who was mm -hmm. killed. And it was a terrible year because, um, uh, you know, that's when uh, Jill Villeneuve also. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I was asked, to cover in, in dire circumstances, but uh, here we go. You know, I uh, I had been out of Formula One for two years then, and uh, and so no one year. Uh, but the the new you know the uh, all every engine was turbocharged because Renault came in 
at first with turbocharged engines and then everybody had to go in that Do direction. Same, yeah. And Ferrari, uh, so I said, I need a test in Fiorano. So I did a test, I got familiar with the car and uh, and finally uh, for Gary, so now we're gonna do the, uh, we'll give you the qualifying tune. I set a record that would lasted eight years there, if you're on. Oh, shit. And I mean, qualifying, I'm telling you what, I mean, I was I was getting fourth gear wheel spin in between the Lesmos. <gasps> Jeez. Yeah, because you didn't have, you had some yeah. down, you had downforce, but uh, a lot of, you know, was a total, a lot of front, because yeah. on the front, we used to have wings, the opposite, to lift the front. Yeah. Because there was so much, you know, in those days, uh, 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 the tunnels were so aggressive that all the downforce was in front. <laughs> you know, the, the so CO they'd be trying to lift the car off the front. The COP, the center yeah. pressure, was all in the front. Jeez. So you had the front wings were like this, lifting the car. I mean, but again, it was just uh, the car was really amazing to drive, yeah. you know. But um, eleven hundred horsepower turbos, yeah. no traction control no, no anything i mean control. think about that yeah. wow yeah. was it the first time you went into the ferrari factory to drive to, you know knowing you were going to be a formula one driver that was another case of life full circle yeah, wasn't it for sure. that was well for sure you know just uh, uh even to win my very first formula one race uh, in a ferrari uh, i mean talk about a dream uh, yeah. as a kid coming from Italy yeah. and all that. And uh, and then communicating uh, with the master directly myself. Yeah. There was no third person, you know, because, uh, you know, after so many fatalities, uh, he just didn't want to hire um, uh, Italian drivers because he was getting so much criticism from the government. Okay. And, um, and so he had mostly foreign drivers. So he always had a third person um, interpreting for him. Yeah. But... Uh, with me, we dealt directly, 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 yeah. you know. And, what was uh, that like? It, it was just, uh, uh, was daunting. Was it, because he was a because he was, formidable well, guy. I mean, yes, and he, he didn't put that air about it, yeah. but you couldn't help it feeling that way. Yeah, okay. I mean, if anything, he was always, he, he would, in so many ways, try to put you at ease, you know, but, uh, uh, here's the thing, I, I, I gotta tell you this. Uh, uh, when I first met it was in 69, and uh, a thousand Ks uh, driving with Chris Amon. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's, Monza is one race that he would go to. Yeah. So I'm there, and um, uh, Chris was always quick, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm out there, and, and in those days in 69, we had a very hard first turn left, and then going up the banking, the, we used part of the banking, and there was a time to be made through there, you know. And I, during practice, I stuffed it, but not enough, just body work yeah. during practice. And I, I said, oh my God, I hope I have a return uh, ticket in my briefcase, <laughs> you know, because I'm going back and the old man was yeah. as they go home. And instead, you know, I. I'm just crawling in the pits and so forth, you know, with the front all yeah. askew. And uh, he was there, you know, with his hand in, you know, in yeah. his vest all the time. And he had a mild smile on his face. And what do I, I realize that he would never fault a driver for just making some, for pushing. That's why he never mm -hmm. ever faulted Jill Villeneuve, because Jill Villeneuve, I mean, he was 110% always. Yeah. How many cars did he wreck? Yeah. Did Mr. He Ferrari didn't ever complain? No. No. He was a true, uh, through and through racer. And and so he figured, I was out there balls out, you know? And the, he said, he the didn't kid's mind crying. That. He didn't mind it. Wow. And, and wow. that's, these are the that's things. That's all right, right? Yeah. You must have thought about that when, said, with your, you know, I said, what a, I'm, what a man, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, you know. What was it like going for din dinner with him? Dad said he enjoyed going for dinner. He'd oh, pick he, him he up. loved lunch. He loved lunch. lunch. Okay, lunch. so you go for lunch. The Cavallino, yeah. Every time, always, it was always lunch. And um, what yeah. was your, con well, I mean, these are the things. Remember, you lived this moment. No, none of us did. I mean, yeah, you, you wanted, did he drink? Did he smoke? Did he, did he always? No, just, just 
some Lambrusco, okay. you know, which is very familiar wine in the area. Yeah. And, um, and, and in fact, uh, when, I, when I arrived there, you know, for, for the test before the, the Monza mm-hmm. thing, uh, my wife and I, we arrived just in time for lunch and so forth. And, um, and I was I arrived there, I was supposed to, on a Saturday, a week before, yeah. and I was supposed to test all day Sunday. And um, and so on, I arrived there, like I said, we have lunch, and I had just a teeny quarter glass of Lambrusco and so forth. And then I said, okay, now we go get fitted up. And um, get fitted up, and I said, I'd like to do a couple of laps. So they get the safety people out and so forth, and uh, um, and I go out and running. Keep, I did 87 laps that day Jeez. and set a record. No. <laughs> After flying all night from the sets. He must have loved that, though. And we, I gave, I said, now, I said, I give the mechanics a day off on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> That's, what we That's did. so fun. No, he, he, I, I met him with that when I was 18. Dad wanted to go. I was just started racing, and Dad wanted to go and um, see him one last time. And we went in, and we went in the workshop where you signed the tiles back in yeah, the day, and yeah, the workshop yeah. and the mechanic. Still, some mechanics. Obviously, this is eighty, yeah, yeah, eighty-seven. So there were people there. It was a, it was a very, it was an amazing experience. And he was, as Dad said, he'll talk through the interpreter, but I swear he knows more English than he lets on. You know, he, it's like he probably did, he yeah, probably did yeah, to yeah, do that. Did, it yeah. was uh, that's so crazy. What was your what was what did you think of Jackie X? Because he's a great friend of mine. When you oh, first saw him, he was quick as crap. We, anything, we, right? We had fabulous times did together. You? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we really uh, we understood each other. Okay, you know, um, you know, sometimes you know you have a couple. You know, I want to qualify. I wanna, yeah, you know, you knew I wanted to qualify. Qualifying was really my rodeo, you know, for some was reason. It? I don't know what it, what yeah. it was, but I just wanted to qualify. And he always let me qualify. And, you know, he was as fast as he needed to be, obviously. He was as quick as anyone. Yeah. And uh, But uh, he, he never fought me, and, and uh, physically um, we were Probably close enough close, that, yeah. that everything, you know, I used to set up the, shot, you know, the cockpit, and... Yeah, we're good. Yeah, he was so good, so good uh, as a partner, you know, to to, to drive yeah. together, uh, laid back, but you know, just uh, always on, and uh, we won some good races yeah. together. You, know, you so. must, you, I mean, but knowing him and knowing his relationship with Dad, you know, for Le Mans together, all those races in the nine five six nine nine five six, Jackie, you know, was individually. A superstar in his he own was. way, right? He, he should was. have been a Formula One champion, absolutely. you know. A, a, absolutely, in a different again, yeah. life taking you different ways. Yeah. So he his respect for you. Uh, I'm going to see him at Le Mans next year and talk. He must have had a huge respect for each of you, mutual we respect, do, mutual for sure. Because yeah. I don't think he let many other people be the qualifier. Yeah. I think he was the guy that did that. Yeah, think about that. That's yeah. unique, yeah. actually. It was, you know, in so many ways. But we got along so well. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it was like a natural, mm. you know, to uh, he and I to be partners. Um, and here again, I just uh, those are beautiful times, you know, when you uh, because you develop this friendship yeah. that's forever, you know, with uh, admiration and respect. Mm. And this is for real. Who was the? I mean, who was the funniest? Who was the funniest guy you remember? Because you know, like in our era, not my era, Dad's era, a lot of it was you know, like David Hobbs was always the funniest guy. You know, but as he said, some of the other drivers, Jack Lafitte was always a great character. Who who do you remember was? Oh, he's a good. He he'll make the well, there party. Were, there were several. One that comes to mind real quick was Arturo Mazzario, <clears throat> called him the Italian cowboy. It really, you know, I actually, I uh, I did uh, I did a race. Uh, I, we won the thousand Ks in Monza also yeah. uh, with an Alfa Romeo uh, with him as a partner, and uh, it's funny. Uh, the f- first time I was called to drive a factory uh, Ferrari at, um, uh, at Daytona, it was at Daytona. They were yep. testing, and Arturo Rosario was the first time on a banking, and um, and he was downshifting for the banking, and I get a call 
from uh, um, Forgeri, you know, Mauro Forgeri, and he said, uh, I said, Mario, could you come down? He says, uh, otherwise we have to go back without, you know, finish the test. He's, uh, he's not, you know, he's not doing a job for us, you know, and so forth. So I went, I, obviously I went down, and uh, and I'm getting fitted up in the cars um, the, the night before. Yeah. And the mechanics, you know, they... Uh, they don't know that I'm speaking Italian, so they're out there, and um, and they're they're making some of their own remarks. I said, "Oh, I said, I said this guy, he's just like a, it's just like a little fag, just like a, <laughs> just like Arturo is, you know, and so forth." And I didn't say anything, and um, so <laughs> so the next day it was uh, Arturo was there with the uh, you know with uh, with Mauro when I would come in. And I was speaking with them in Italian, the, and the mechanics go, "Oh shit!" <laughs> that never, is brilliant. I never, I never said a word. To that them. is brilliant. <laughs> oh, I always say that would be, that's the best to be able to <laughs> for them not to know. They should have known by the name, right? They should. They should have worked it out. I think, oh, he's um, <laughs> we you, and we joked about it. The girls not being a motivating factor, but. It was a colorful time, the 70s, it right? Was. The 60s, we had, 70s. We had so much time, like uh, just uh, the, the, uh, all of the stupid things that we used to do yeah. and the, 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 the pranks that we used to pull on each other. You know, we'd be by the pool in, uh, at, at the Kalami Ranch in South Africa yeah. or something, you know, with Rick Clay. Clay Ragazzoni was, he was. He, he and I really got on, but yeah. he was so much fun. Well, and the like, you know, we'd be there, and there would be a waiter, you know, with drinks, and we'd, we'd bet, you know, it says, uh, okay, uh, I'll give you a, a 5,000 liter if you just push him in a pool, you know. We used to do the stupid things like that. You know? <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, it, um, you know, the conversations that were going on, oh, you know, by the pool with all the guys. Yeah. We were all buddies you know that uh, and Kailami worked well right because it was a long way away yeah, it was yeah. like the winter break yes almost. indeed yeah yeah, yeah. Kailami and I remember we used to spend a lot of time in actually in Buenos Aires you know yeah. we stayed at uh, Sheraton I remember by the pool there was always all the drivers yeah. were staying there and um, so the, all the stories you know <laughs> I bet going on, I mean you got but you were married by then right yes. you were young oh yeah yeah so I married yeah I mean, I didn't, on, on I didn't mess around. No, on reflection, of course, it, there's people that say if you want to be truly successful, find the right woman, marry her, and you're yeah. going to be the biggest you can be. Yeah. But racing drivers traditionally didn't follow that advice. <laughs> I, know, I, I know. mean, it was it was there was no social media. Like I joked yeah. earlier before we started about Jackie saying, "Thank God there was no social yeah. media," but there was no accountability, right, Not for the really. behavior. Yeah, you could just do true. what. You, that everyone traveled the world to had a good time that's for real yeah for sure. who, who was the um i mean i know who they were but like dad <laughs> said you know francois severe and i mean beautiful handsome yeah, men the yeah, I jackie that, handsome like man yeah. i mean he was a good he was a, he was fast good looking, good looking yeah. right all the all the traits <laughs> yeah did you did you get to know him well no i never no. got to know him uh, because mm. it was uh before my time when okay was, yeah you know. well he I, I I was in in a race, you know, like uh, when he was also as well, yeah. you know. In fact, when I broke in, but uh, I didn't do enough races to really get to know him. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, unfortunately, he wasn't wasn't there long and enough. I, was you it? know, because right after that, I think that's when I Jackie, know it was Jackie retired. It know? was uh, crazy. Now, obviously, I haven't seen you since Aldo uh, passed. So sorry, you know. Obviously, that's yeah. terrible. A twin. Yeah. A twin is worse yeah. than anything, isn't it? Yes, because uh, we're all one. You know, yeah. we uh, we share so many of our early dreams, and you think the same in so many ways. Um, Aldo and I got on so well. I mean, uh, we didn't have to say anything. Yeah. We knew what we were thinking, and uh, it was that type of relationship. Yeah. You know, very light. Uh, we didn't. Have, you know, if we hadn't seen each other for months, we didn't have to say hi, yeah. you know, because we always, you know, we've yeah. been talking, talking always uh, one way or another. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it was so sad in so many ways because, uh, 
You know, and the beautiful thing about Aldo is the fact that uh, he, he never showed any what about me. Never, never, never. That was going to be my next question. To, never, so. never uh, appeared to be the victim or wanted to yeah. you know, say, you know, oh, man, I'm, you're so lucky. I'm not. No. He was always supporting me. He was always on the yeah. sideline, always jovial. Yeah. And um, it was something to be said for for his character, for his man. I'm not sure that I would have been the same. The same. If you'd had the accident. If I would have had the accident, I would have seen my brother succeed and, you know, do all the things that we're dreaming about. And um, I, I'm not sure that I would have had the same attitude mm -hmm. as Aldo. And, and, you know, when I had, you know, time to reflect, I said, oh, man, what a good kid yeah. you know, my brother yeah. was. He, but he must have also, as you say, quite a testament to his character. But he must have under enjoyed also the journey, the American dream, the immigrant dream. I mean, you both lived it. You both you lived it to its fullest extent, more than no, no question. Like the poster child for it. But it must have been a very satisfying for him to see the the family. Again, I mean, uh, just like, uh, you know, between the two of us, we're ac accounting for eight drivers, eight race drivers yeah. over through the kids. Yeah, yeah. And he lived through, like John, for instance, yeah. who was the most successful. Yeah. Uh, he lived through them. You know, he had his own family, yeah. his own kids, yeah. pursuing what he loved so dearly. And uh, so he got a satisfaction it was yeah. good enough mm. for him so um he he felt he, he, you know he felt that he was not cheated in any no. way no. and he showed that and and to me oh my god he showed a lot of character you know for being a twin i didn't think yeah. that would have been <laughs> yeah I mean, it, who could say feeling. I you, think I again behaved the you same. don't know you just don't no, know no, no. do you but, uh, oh, I must tell you, I, I've actually always wanted to say this, that when Dad was driving with John, um, and they did well, remember, in yeah. the Miller car and everything, yeah. they did really well. Um, he was always he was always so gracious, but almost in a apologetically kind way, right? Yeah. John was such a... Yeah. He, was, he was so not the, the dominant force in the yeah. room. He was yeah. always very kind to me as a, as a yeah. young man. Was a good I mean, kid. He was a good kid, right? Good. God, that's someone yeah, taken too young kid. too as well. The family that he raised, I mean, just really, really uh, exemplary. Yeah. Really? You know, he's got the two girls. They're both, you know, professional. They're all uh, great educations. There's uh, they're both uh, in the medical profession. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, young Jared, uh, you know, he's driving. Yeah. He, he's a great kid, you know, and... I think uh, John kept him too much in sprint cars and so forth. You know, I yeah. think he needed more road race training. I think mm. early on to be able to engage and get into probably the Indy cars at least. Uh, yeah. You know, and uh, but anyway, uh, good family, wonderful, wonderful people, and that's yeah. the quality that John showed yeah. clearly. Yeah. And um, but you know the entire family. Yeah. We were very close, very close, all of us. Um, which again is, uh, uh, I think that's very precious, uh, as you can imagine, for us. When you guys came over, there was no concept of a legacy. Your father felt there was. That's why he was giving you the chance. He didn't know what legacy meant, but yeah. I'm sure he didn't. You know, he could never have forecast your success. But it's it's quite a special thing in the, the as you get older and you realize that. Billions of people on this planet who won't leave a, sadly much of a mark, right? It's a yeah. we're blips in time, moments in time, but but you've created a legacy. I mean, I was trying to think. There's not another name, as you know, bigger than Andretti in terms of Andretti karting, Andretti. This, but it's it's a household name. Legacy, legacy suddenly becomes you, doesn't it? it it's it's well, not a strategy. Yeah, it's and I, I just I count my blessings every day. Why? because I pursue, you know, my ultimate dream, which was a dream, dream, dream forever, uh, more than I could have ever hoped mm -hmm. had come tr true for me. And 
I, the other thing that uh, I look back, my dad, my dad enjoyed uh, everything that was happening to us ultimately. Yeah. Except for in the beginning. But the ultimately, yeah. when he un- started to understanding, you know, why, you know, we were pursuing this. And he used to say to me always, you know, here in America, it's too bad that you have to die. You know, yeah. in his life, he says, you know, like uh, I would have, uh, you know, uh, Ford, you know, it would yeah. give me these Lincolns to drive. Then I would buy it at the end and give it to my yeah. dad. And he said, oh, my God, in America, it's too bad that we have to die someday. <laughs> you know? And that's a great yeah, feeling. it's a great you way, know, right? Just enjoying, enjoying the moment, enjoying life, yeah. you know, and uh, having that appreciation you know, for what is happening. So, you know, all these things, again, you know, you look back and uh, and that's why I feel, you know, again, so, so fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I actually was, I saw Jackie Stewart, I did this with him in the summer and I got the same feeling from him. You know, it's, I mean, Jackie's, he does, he is Jackie, does things his way, but, you know, it's a, it's a, very special thing to probably be able to reflect back and realize that that you made an impact that that right. your family made an impact that you and your brother from the little you know midgets around here could do that uh, i mean very special well, if we if we didn't make an impact is uh while well, we were totally satisfying ourselves mm. you know, that's what it was and that's why uh i feel that i owe so much to the sport yeah. I have so much deep love forever, you know, for the mm-hmm. sport. Uh, like, you know, people say, well, <clears throat> why do you, with everything going, why does you know, Michael, why do you want to be in Formula mm-hmm. One? Why? Because we purely love it. You do. We love it. And if there's a fault to that, you know, we've been criticized, oh, well, you just have a passion. You don't know the business. Yeah, we know it, but that's all we've done. We have lived our entire life. You know, with Formula One being our business. That's crazy. I'm actually going to switch. In being our business. Okay. One second, I'm going to change camera around because this actually suddenly got really hot. So this way, if I make this one new, I'm not so okay. important. So it just suddenly got really, really Do hot. I, should I put this? That's fine. Oh, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Yeah, make and still make it. Um, sorry about that, guys. Uh, because these little batteries, because it's shooting so high, it does it. I'll just talk. Um, yeah, I mean, the passion for it, that, that's it's like when you talk to anyone, it's like, why, why question why Roger Penske does what he does? Why? Still, he doesn't need more money. He couldn't see, he's, more, he's one of the wealthiest men in the world. And you forget when you talk to these people, they do it because it's the same thing that they fell in love with when they were young. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the money and the success. That's what motivates you in life. That's yeah. why you look forward to getting yeah. up in the morning. Yeah, totally. Uh, and, you know, what I, just like myself, I just can never uh, scratch my itch enough for driving. You know, mm. I keep driving those two-seaters or whatever, just to, yeah. just to have some control, some, you know, involvement in some kind of race cars. And uh, I'll be going to races until they put me in a box, yeah. obviously, because why? That's my life. Yeah. And... Uh, is it fun to see the people's reaction still too? Because well, you're touching people who who remember when you started. But yeah, uh, yeah, Must absolutely be great. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, just like you know, going back to even the, the two seater thing, um, there's no better way to showcase the sport, you know, no. to have someone because they come away. Even uh, really staunch fans, you know, they know a little more about. It. Oh my goodness! I didn't know I was like that because yeah. it's such a non-participant sport. Ours, you know. Even you can go to driving schools or whatever, and uh, you never go as fast as the the, the diploma they give you. you no, know? no, no, the no. Diploma will say you just did 164.7. It was actually about 97.8. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So they and and this is this is satisfaction to see people really uh, having some. Uh, respect, if you will, yeah. and uh, appreciation for yeah. wh- what our sport is is all about. Yeah. What what our drivers, you know, go 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 through to to be able to do it properly and all that. 
So, you know, all of that counts. I mean, yeah. I, I um, you know, I love the fans because, you know, the, our world would not exist without no. the fans, you know, and that there's no bigger compliment to me no. than anyone just knowing something about even my career, you know, and you have to be, I mean, if you don't appreciate that, then you're not even human. No. What, um, I know that you have a bucket list item coming up soon. I think you're going to drive something. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was uh, last year I I was at Goodwood and uh, I, I sat in, uh, in you know, the F- McLaren Formula One car that mm-hmm. was there and, uh, and, and Zach Brown, of course, you know, he, he bought my, you know, for the 69 and uh, I had driven it a few times and I'm sitting there in a the car. I said, man, I said, what would I give to drive this one? Yeah. And, uh, and he later on, he said, well, he says, keep talking to me, you know. Is that what he said? And I didn't even talk to him much. For, I didn't want to put him in a, you know, in a bit, bit of a bind, you know, you know, It's like when someone says, come and stay. You yeah. don't know how to call up and say, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm in town. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> in town. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, true to what he said, you know, he, I couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, he dropped this on me. He says, uh, are we going to, he said, I'm going to, you gotta have to say it. I'm gonna say it to you on live TV, and then it's oh my goodness, you know, and <laughs> that's what it was. Uh, so now it looks like it's gonna happen. So what car you'll what car will you drive? Well, he um, at first I thought it was gonna be last year's car, but he said it's gonna be a 2014. That was still gonna be the uh, uh, the hybrid era car. Okay, you know so. Uh, and I still think said. it'll pre, pre, feel pretty it's freaking cool. quick. Yeah. I mean, it'll be... So uh, we'll be doing it uh, at Laguna Seca first. Yeah. And then uh, then he said we'll do it at Coda. I don't know how wow. you got permission for that. but That's uh, fantastic. We'll see. I saw Colton Herter at the uh, BMW launch in LA uh, of the LMDH. It looks good, all those cars. The new GTP prototypes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're in for a big heyday right now. You know, I said to John Doon and president of IMSA, you know, NASCAR, yeah. IMSA, don't hold, don't keep your fingers in your pockets here. Go full on because oh. I think the world's about to change a lot in the next five, ten years. Yes. And, well, we all know that. And this era. sort of era and the, the way the unification of the rules and these cars with the, with the hybrid power plants, V8s, I mean, they're going to be... The car looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, and they're all, I mean, Lamborghini, everybody's in it. Yeah. Anyway, but I, Colton was there. Obviously, he's one of the drivers, and he was standing, standing next to Brian. And, uh, you know, they're so similar, right? They're just two two guys that if you sat on a plane, you'd never know that they were, <laughs> the, how fast they were. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't ask him about the license thing and everything because that must just be very boring to him, really, and disappointing. But... I did ask about what it was like to drive a Formula One car. His test in his uh, test. Yeah, part of my, yeah. yeah, and he said it. He said the power. He looked good. He looked good. He looked good. I'd love to see the data, right? Wouldn't yeah. you like to see yeah. the heartbeat of their trace against I know the you know. data. And oh you it's do? Impressive. Is it? He's good, right? He could be good enough. I'll tell you off camera. Okay, you tell me off camera. But you know, I, I just thought, you know, that that is, you know, just hearing from a driver that how exciting it was, the yeah. sheer pleasure. But also, he was telling me, you know, whereas in IndyCar, you know, you, I remember Gilles de Ferran saying this, you know, you're in IndyCar, you might have four engineers. In Formula One, there's 14. You know, everything is a multiple, yeah. multiple of the same equation. But he, uh, yeah, he just said it was, he said, you know, the trouble is the, the amount of data you have to consume. Yeah. Yeah. Each steer, the steering wheel, you know, all the settings then have 10 more settings of 10 more yeah, settings. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's uh, special. Do you like watching Formula One still? Oh, I love to, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's great now, isn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm in on all of them, all the majors. Uh, uh, number one, you know, some I obviously have uh, more, excite me more than others, you know, but Formula One forever, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was my first love and will always be, um, regardless uh, of the... You know individuals that are running it mm-hmm. right now, but uh, uh, the 
the series, the racing, what it means. I mean, let's face it, it's the Olympics of motorsports. It is. And, um, and, and that's it. End of story. You're saying it yeah. all. Yeah. Do you, I just think it's sad when anyone talks about adding so many races in other places. And how could you lose Spa? How could you lose Monaco? I mean, how could you lose Britain? You, yeah. you, you, you don't. You don't. You lose that, you lose. You lose. I mean, I think on their big fat spreadsheet, yeah. it shows they make more money when they do other races, other places. But I know. Don't ever forget where it comes from. No. Where it came, where it all came from. Also, that connection to history. People, yeah. um, I've never heard a driver say, "I don't want to drive at Monaco." Yes, it's too tight, hard to overtake. But all of it, but you want to be there. But you want to be there. It's yeah. Spa, yeah. the craziest, yeah. I mean, the craziest series of corners maybe in the world yeah. that they still yeah. freaking love driving. Yeah, right. And I, I, I haven't been there since the sports car, so I went with Dad, but, or actually since I raced there in the Viper. But just standing there uh, in Eau Rouge, watching them go through, imagine yeah. what it even looks like now. Yeah. I mean, they are yeah. flat as a kipper through there. Yeah. Absolutely, I, I love it. I, I think it's yeah. it's still it, it's it's when we watch racing like that, it it still sparks the same Six juvenile feet. emotion, right? Yes, that, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and it's always new. It's new yeah. excitement. Yeah. It's never blasé. No. Never, not that. No. Not that type of a thing. No. Uh, so that's the beauty of it. Do you think? Uh, I, I think you never get enough of it. Never get enough of it. Do you? Do you think that, uh, and I know the answer is yes, but Mario Andretti starting out now, how would he do? Well, given I, opportunity I would, and a lot of I money, would, <laughs> I would I would hope that I would have the same passion. Yeah, you know, it, unless you're driven by passion, you know, nothing happens. Yeah, and um, uh, I'll uh, measure my passion for the sport against anyone on the planet ever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anyone that loves the sport more than I do, and that's a fact. My last thing before we finish is, I mean, you've got so many kids, grandkids. How many grandkids? Seven. Seven. And you are, I'm sure, uh, you know, your words ring true for a lot of young drivers. But in life, if you if if you could leave a message, if there was a motto, if there was a philosophy for life, what would yours, what would yours be? Does, not just about racing, just about how to live as a man. I always you? say, follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. And hopefully you have dreams young enough where you can pursue it. But if uh, anyone, any young individual that has dreams early in life is going to be successful. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. That was great. I really appreciate My it. My pleasure. My That's pleasure. great. That was wonderful. It's good seeing all the pictures up on the wall. I was looking yeah. at look at you. Look at you and Fangio. And yeah, Fangio. See that? Uh, here we are. Jimmy and I at Indianapolis in yep. 65. Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I take a picture? No, no. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Look at that. Look how young you both were. Yeah. Look, when I first met Paul Newman in 1967, uh, I had him sit in my car. My, look at that picture. Uh, that's, yeah, Aldo. Jeez. <laughs> that's Just Jackie. Yeah. He's handing me the Formula One rookie yeah. and trophy. Uh, yeah. Look at that. That's Graham. Yeah, Graham. What was he like? Graham was a great guy. He was a good character, oh, right? God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. the guy. I mean, his sense of humor was amazing. He must have been, yeah. Amazing sense of humor. Yeah, he must have been. I mean, because Damon, Damon is, he's a quirky dude too, right? Yeah, yeah, he is, he is, he is. I love it. God, that's incredible. Do you sometimes look at these pictures? I mean, it's almost like another person. It's your life, but it's so incredible. Yeah, yeah. Look look at that. See Fangio there. Yeah, we were in Stuttgart when uh, uh, this is the 100th celebration of Mercedes. 